Hi everybody. Today we are going to look at how to dress your chainsaw bar. Something which is often neglected by users, home users in particular, and professional users. Um, for this task you are going to need a chainsaw containing the bar you wish to dress. Note that this is not called a blade, it is called a bar. Also note, this is not called a cover, it is called a scabbard. You are also going to need a 90 degree straight edge. A bar dresser, you don't need one of these but it makes your life a lot easier if you do have one. This is basically um, something which has a, a file set at 90 degrees and the file can be turned, it can be changed, replaced. You're going to need your sparky wrench. You are going to need your depth guide. Make sure it's the appropriate one for the saw that you're working on. In this case it is a 3 8 pitch chain. Hope you can see that. You're also going to need a regular metal file. Okay, let's get going. First thing we're going to do, remove the bar. Chain break off. Loosen the sprocket cover. I'm going to release the chain a little just to make my life easier. Mm. Give that a clean as well, I think. Off with the chain, off with the bar. How sharp's this? This needs a good sharpen actually. Ooh, that's blunt. There is the bar. I'm gonna get rid of the chain. I'm gonna give this a I'm gonna give this a blast off with the compressor and a bit of a bit of a clean before I put the bar back on. So here we have our bar. Right now then. Okay. First thing to check. If you run your finger like that, can you feel a rough edge there? Now I can feel a very definite edge there. And that is you can't see it, but there's a that comes up. This bar is in dire need of dressing. Not so bad on the other side. On this one. On this side, yep. I definitely feel it. Not so much at the front, but definitely there. I'm gonna flip it over. A little bit there, not so much. Again, this happens, it tends to wear one side of the rail more than the other because I am right-handed. Now let's have a look down here. That's not too bad. That's not too bad. Um, I do have a habit, because I'm right-handed, of wearing the, th this side rail, so the left-hand rail, as you look at it. Basically, as I press the saw down because I'm right-handed and because the... Um, the, the top handle is there, I will tend to angle the saw like that. So you'll tend to find that this side of the bar, this side of the chain, weighs more than the other side. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give this a bit of a wipe down, a bit of a clean, blast it off with a compressor. Okay, I've given it a, I've given it a bit of a wipe. Oops, I've given it a bit of a wipe. Let's clean out the oil holes. Now we're going to take our depth gauge and we're going to use this to clean the rubbish out of the guide rails. I'm going to start in the centre of the nose sprocket. Let's run that down. I do I clean this bar quite regularly, it shouldn't be too bad. It's not. And it's not so long since I've... Um, not so long since I've done this. There we 
we are okay and the bar is now clean check the nose sprocket the sprocket wheel is free there's something about this um about these oregon bars it doesn't take very much at all to actually trap that nose sprocket with the still bar if you find that the nose sprocket doesn't turn very well it's usually because the bar has been pinched or bent but with the oregon bars i find the bars are more resilient more more robust but they are more prone to actually getting tiny little bits of debris trapped in there and that does upset the sprocket wheel okay what we now need to do is to actually make sure that oh ooh, no no what we need to do first is we need to make sure that these rails have not worn down too far now picture what happens with this the chain will sit inside these rails as you press on the chain so as the chain is there and you press into some wood what will happen is the chain wears the bar away now as these rails get lower and lower the chain will begin to actually hit the central structural support part of the bar we don't want that so we use not a lot of people know this we use these let's have a look can you see that we use these millimeter depth marks on the edge of the depth gauge people think the depth gauge refers to um, how you use these to set the depth of the rakers they do but it's primarily because you use this to measure the wear on your bar. Now I know from the still website that, um, and the open website, that on this bar, the maximum depth I can go down to is about six millimeters. Let's have a look, where are we? Oh, plenty. That's one, two, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. Have a look. Yeah, why is that? Yeah, we're pretty good there. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're floating at about eight. Let's try the other side. Yeah, we're about eight. Still plenty of meat. Still plenty of meat left on this bar. Bar's good to go. So what we need to do now is make sure that these rails are level. Now what you can use for this is a bar dresser. Bar dressers are good to have. They will guarantee that you can get both of these rails to the same level. If you don't have a bar dresser, you can just use a regular file, but there's much more guesswork involved. If you're going to use a regular file, then you need to use your straight edge and you need to check that you are actually level. Now I do keep right on top of this bar. I do use it an awful lot, so I do take good care of it. This is not too far. That's not too far out of, out of um, the neat one there actually. So I'm just gonna very quickly run this down just to remove any Rust, any burrs, any marks. The great thing about this is that if, you, is you, if one of your rails is, is really out of kilter, then this will actually get it right down to where you need it to be. Well, and guess what? This takes some skill out of the job. But if you're trying to do a running with pain in a bar and you're in the middle of bloody nowhere, you just need to get the job done. Okay, so those rails are now level. I can see that. Should we try the balance test? Oh, uh, it's probably not gonna work because this, this bench is not straight. Not a plum, there we go. That's your, um, that's your test for, are your rails equal? The final thing I need to do Remember at the beginning I said I could feel I could feel burrs there. They were already there, but when you go down you file your rails, you'll find that you get even more. So you go down and then you get those off. Nice and smooth. Flip it over. Yeah.
little bit more. Nice and smooth. That side, now I need it this side done. is the final side to be done again yeah you can actually can you hear that that's how far over that side of that bar is this is a really really important part of bar dressing And it's one that's often neglected. Excellent. That was sharp enough to cut my finger on before. Now it's not. The last thing I'm going to do is very gently run down again with this just to take off the last few bills that I've pushed over. And then fall in the side of the bar. And there we go. That bar is now cleaned, dressed. Good to go. One thing I will say as well, if if you've been neglecting to actually dress your bar properly, you may find that you get some secondary grooves on the rails. Um, you must get rid of those. When you run your finger across there, those two rails should feel flat. They should not um, have a bit of a profile like that. That's not what you want. If you don't dress your bar regularly, then you'll find that you will get secondary grooves. There we go. That's all good. Put this all back together and we're good to go. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe.